Well, it's a jungle out there, boys. Jungle. Uh, you know what you call a gorilla with a banana in each ear, Bob? Whatever you want, he can't hear. But him, a little rim shot. Uh, it was a great day for the Aggies. Uh, going uh, six in a row against Cal Poly is always uh, fun and rewarding and uh, means something to get the Golden Horseshoe. Uh, it's hard to believe we're coming down the pipe here and uh, next week will be a, uh, a senior day for some people that have been very special in our football program and have been here un unusually for six years uh, because of COVID. Uh, so it's hard to believe that uh, guys like Lonzi and Day Day and some of those guys will be celebrating their last time in an Aggie uniform at home, most likely. Uh, but uh, it, was a, it was a fun day. We got to see a lot of guys, again, play and score that normally you don't see. Uh, Miles continues, and he was awarded the player of the week in the big sky, as was uh, Teddy. Miles being very, very efficient. Um, have two really special players up here. Lan Larison does a ton of things for us. I mean, he throws it, he runs it, he catches it. Uh, he's great on cover teams and special teams. He's great as a return guy. Does a number of things. Jackson's been absolutely spectacular and a great special teams player and probably had the highlight of the year with the 23-yard punt uh, fake up in uh, Montana State. And uh, just been a real pleasure to have on our football team. So it was a good moment. Uh, we've got to take care of the ball a little bit better. Normally we're pretty good at that. We did get some turnovers, which is great. But we did put the ball on the ground uh, a little bit. I think we're running the ball very well. We're not taking a lot of sacks. Uh, Miles is being very prolific with the completion percentage. Um, in defense, we're playing great red zone and, and getting the ball taken away. Uh, but we're just trying to continue to, to get better and refine, have a little fun with the whole thing. Uh, but we're going to celebrate some seniors this weekend, and hopefully we can keep getting better. Coach. Coach. <laughs> um. I, it's true. You talk about team culture all the time and how, how good it is. I just wanted you to comment. The, the, one of the last plays of the game with Jeremiah making that run, that spectacular run down the sidelines, and to see every single player be as excited, if not more so, for him. For people in, in the crowd, almost a reinforcement of what you talk about daily, but maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, these guys will tell you, we talk about contributors. I really hate the term starter uh, because it takes way more than 11 guys on offense and 11 guys on defense. So it's about contributors. And some of those people are in scout team or some of them are in limited roles, but it's trying to fulfill your role to the best of your ability. And uh, Jackson would tell you, because he goes against him and sees him in scout team, nobody goes harder than Jeremiah. He goes full throttle every single play and uh, he's doing a great job for us on special teams and uh, there is a great love and bond on our football team and a lot of respect for each other and we're not hung up on who the leading rusher or passer or tackler is if you're on the football team uh, you get love and you get respect and you, you feel valued and uh, I really take a lot of pride in that. Thanks Sasquatch I appreciate it it's good to see you. Um... Question for Lan. Um, so, special teams, catching the ball, running the ball. I mean, every facet of the game you seem to be involved in. Um, what do you enjoy most about playing football? What do you love about um, all the different ways that you contribute to the team? Um, I think it was you that was that had that great punt uh, pinned down at the three-yard line or two-yard line. It's one of the most athletic plays I've seen. and. That doesn't show up on a lot of stat sheets. So just as a football player, what, what do you love about the game? Uh, I would say the biggest thing I love about the game is just the competitiveness uh, and just like the showtime. Everyone goes out there and tries to compete, play their best. And uh, I just love being in that scenario and playing hard. Lane, I'll throw it out there too. Uh, Coach Hawkins, Cody that is, said that you might be the – most uh, NFL potential player on the team with everything that you do? Is, is that something that you think about? Is that a long-term goal of yours? Uh, potentially, like uh, if I just keep getting better every day and keep going towards that, I would, I would uh, love to play. 
uh, as long as I can. How about playing with Alonzo? What What's that meant to you, and what have you learned from him? Alonzo uh, has taught me a lot, almost everything I know at running back. I haven't, uh, I didn't come in here as a running back. I played running back a little bit in Pee Wee, but he's been a huge mentor to me, and I'll always look up to that guy. And talk about that too, because you did play quarterback, so and you've you've thrown here obviously pretty successfully too, so. Um, just talk about that role in, in terms of making the, the adjustment. Uh, it wasn't too hard making the adjustment. I mean, I was more of a running quarterback. I didn't throw too much in high school, but uh, I really like it. I really like playing running back. A uh, lot of new jobs, a lot of different jobs, but I like to just fulfill the role, do my job. Hey everybody. <coughs> Talks about your background being a steer wrestler and, and uh, your family's background in the rodeo. C can you talk about that a little bit, uh, just your background with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up on a ranch. Uh, I've rodeoed my entire life. Um, my, like, favorite event would be steer wrestling. Um, but Galvin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, my family come from a long line of cowboys and cowgirls, but, yeah. Uh, question for uh, Jackson. The um, second half, he pitched a shutout. Uh, energy level was off the off the charts. It was 31-17. So what were some of the things talked about at halftime? And, and, and uh, it seemed to be an emphasis on both sides of the ball, come out and control the line of scrimmage, both running on offense but really getting pressure on defense. So if you could talk about the second half, adjustments made, and, and how you really got after them. Uh, at halftime, we were really challenged to just impose our will. Uh, physicality was something we preached at the week of practice. And, and really, first half, that second quarter especially, we felt like we got pushed around on defense a little bit. So we came in at halftime, kind of reset reset ourselves and uh, and wanted to be the most physical team out there. And I think we did that in the third and fourth quarter, pitching the shutout. Um, I think this week, too, is especially big. we got to be the most physical team out there. And I think uh, we're going to do that starting with practice tomorrow. A question for you, Coach. Obviously, last year, Idaho State leaves a little bit of a, a bad taste in your mouth. Uh, went up there, got beat. Uh, team's on a nice win streak right now, but just the thoughts on the process. It's the last home game. Uh, you want to obviously be playing a team that beat you last year. What are your thoughts with Idaho State? Yeah, they've battled us every year we, we played them, and this is a really good conference, and you can't get caught up in who's supposed to be good and who's supposed to not be good and get concerned with the with the records and for us it's really about just cleaning it up and trying to get better and playing at our best and playing at a high level and trying to achieve excellence regardless of who we play but we don't get hung, hung up in the, in the logos I'm not a revenge guy I don't think it's I don't think it's good, good to teach revenge that's not what sports is it's about being your best and it's about respecting every opponent and bringing your best every week so uh, we don't really look at the records. We know these guys have a lot of really good football players. And uh, every year we've played them, it's been tough. So we, we got to get ready to go. Coach, what do you think are some of the causes or explanation just for the offensive production that's been so prolific the last three weeks? Well, I think our staff has done a really nice job at dialing it up. We've got a lot of talented players. I actually told Jeff Burke, our strength coach, I think he's done an amazing job uh, really trying to look at our workload and our speed output and keeping our guys at their very best. And we're getting a lot of long plays and explosion plays. Land had one last week against um, Northern Colorado. And we've been able to, to stay in good shape that way. So I give it Jeff Burke a lot of a credit for that. Our staff obviously has to dial some things up. But I really think, again, I, I credit the players because there are a lot of little things that go into every really good play, whether it's a run or pass or blitz and Jackson would tell you that it's and when everybody kind of does what they're supposed to do good things happen and so many of those long plays that you saw there were two or three little things along the way that really made those big plays happen and it's fun to look at the guy that's doing it but there's a lot of other people involved with that too so I think just continue to have continuity stay in there keep plugging along the players belief our staff's work ethic and creativity I think all that comes together Coach, I know you appreciate your senior class, just how much they've had to go through over the, the pandemic and everything else to get to this point. Can, can you just 
talk about the senior class and what it'll mean to if it is the last time out here at Aggie Stadium? Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. I mean, they, they, those guys came in here with us, many of those guys. Uh, Connor Pettick is in that. Nick Amoa is in that. Obviously, Lonzi and Dede and, and, and others as well. Um, for them to, A, have the belief in us to come here and then get us to a championship in 18, got us to the playoffs last year. We could have been in the playoffs in the shortened COVID season had we elect to. Uh, we just got ranked this time, I think. So we'll have been ranked in the last five of the last six years. Uh, you see the new building, the Bruce Edwards building and the things that have happened around here. And those guys are part of that foundation um, and have helped the resurgence of Aggie football. So their belief, their work ethic, and their ability to over, overcome things, to, to thrive in adversity. We talk about the hero's journey all the time. So I'm really proud of those guys. Not only have they done amazing things as football players, but you know they're going to be successful when they leave here because they've got the makings of a championship. Yeah, and for some of those guys, they were here from year one with you when yes. you came here as well. Yep, yep, six years. Um, I know this weekend, too, there's going to be um, some people coming back from the 81-82 championship era to the game. Just wondering what, what that means for you personally, having played back then. It's hard to believe I'm that old. Um, but I guess Sasquatch lives to be, I don't know, what do you think, Bob? 220, 250, something around there. Um, it'll be fun to see those guys. Many of those guys I have not seen. One of the benefits that these guys have in this era, because of social media and cell phones and, and all that, they can stay a lot more interconnected than my generation. Uh, so many of those guys I have not seen for a while, so I'll be looking forward to seeing those people. Uh, as we talked about before, we were also on that team in, in 81 that started one and four and then ended up winning the league championship and going undefeated and then winning 13 games in a row and getting to the national championship the next year. So uh, tremendous, tremendous people. I say that all the time. You look at the, the Ken O'Briens and the Bo Eason's and the Mike Wise and all those guys, tremendous, tremendous athletes. But I mean, as players, we knew that, but you really look at what kind of people they are too. I mean, I think Ken O'Brien, for all his accolades, and at which are many, he's still unbelievably humble and, and low keyed. I mean, I'll, I think he has a hard time being Ken O'Brien, the, the superstar. He just wants to be the guy who loves to go duck hunting. Talk about Idaho State specifically about their strengths. Big physical. Uh, again, a lot of these guys played against us last year. Quarterback is very athletic. They have one of the best receivers in the conference. I think he's second in receiving. We saw the first uh, last week. Um, talented group of running backs. They're always big and physical. They have a tremendous defensive line. Um, and they give you a lot of problems, do a bunch of different different things. So it'll, it'll be a challenge. I mean, physically, these guys are on par with most everybody we played. Then how far does the kick have to go into the end zone before you won't bring it out? Uh, that that's usually up to the big man. Uh, he uh, he usually said if I, I was like, hey, can I take it out? And he was like, are you, well, are you scared? I, no, that's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, I usually just assess how deep I am, and I can see a little bit out of the uh, peripherals, and uh, tr usually trust my guys just to make a make a block and go for it. Christian McCaffrey had himself a ball game yesterday. Threw for a touchdown, caught a touchdown, ran for one. Do you see yourself kind of as the Christian McCaffrey of this team a little bit? Um, I got a long way to go to get up to that to that standard, but. Uh, yeah, I watched that game. He, he did a heck of a job. Jackson, for you, let's go back to the fake punt and run that everybody's still talking about it. Tell us, walk us through the play from your vantage point and what happened. Um, so the play started. We ran out there. Uh, we took two penalties. Uh, so we were all kind of like looking around, questioning each other. And uh, we got the right look. We ended up feeling good about it, and we ran it. And 
23 yards or whatever it was, it was it was a team effort. That extra push at the end was was well needed, and I wouldn't have done it without my teammates. But it was fourth and 23. You felt comfortable calling it? Uh, felt comfortable calling it. I felt like we needed to call it. We needed to shift the momentum in the game and and get the ball back to the to the offense, and that's what we what we wanted to do. Linebacking position might be the most deep on what's a very deep team. Can you just talk about the linebackers themselves? Yeah. Uh, we are lucky. We are blessed to have that that group: Nick Eaton, Cam Trimble, Jace, Teddy, Cole, uh, Luca, Cade. We have a lot of guys who contribute and, and play at play the position. Uh, we're all super close friends, which is which stems from a lot of just time spent together and working out, doing extra work in the summer. And I think one of the biggest things we do, we all love each other. We're all happy when, when somebody makes a play. It's not, oh, I don't want them to make that play because I want to go back in. It's we're genuinely excited for each and every player that that happens. And Teddy's pick, for example, was a, was a great example. You, Cade Peacock, run down there and made a block on the quarterback to, to break him free. And, and then we all go celebrate with Teddy. And I think that's kind of epitomizes what, what this group is to the team. I was going to ask you which interception at first, but you clarified. Um, just talk about Teddy obviously coming back. What's the difference? What's the impact with him back out there now healthy again? Teddy's a great leader. Uh, he's a young guy on the team, but he is a great leader. Uh, we feed off his energy, feed off his explosiveness, I guess. Uh, the, the first interception was one of the, the greatest plays I've seen, just being able to tip it up to yourself and, and have the spatial ball awareness he does. It's it's really talented, and it helps our red zone red zone defense tremendously when we get a turnover a, a, in the red zone. Um, hard nosed guy, loves to work, and I think the defense feeds off his work worth ethic, uh, ethic more than anything else. In the last few weeks, you guys have forced turnovers in the red zone. And, and talking to you know Matt Coombs, he, he said it's about making plays down in the red zone, and you guys have been able to do that. Yeah, our our uh, mentality in the red zone is really uh, we got to bow our neck and get ready for anything. Everyone has different trick plays, different wrinkles they like to throw at us once we get down the red zone, but it's really, we got to stop them from getting over that line and, and we've been doing a great job at it. Jackson, what do you see as your specific strength at the linebacker, if you were just to kind of compare, contrast with some of the other backers on the team? Uh, my strength on the football field is trying to be the smartest guy out there. I think uh, the film study I put in and, and just the knowledge of the defense really helps me make plays. I'm not always the quickest, fastest, strongest, but I feel like if I know where the ball is going, I feel like I have a have a chance to make that play.